Heyo! Welcome all to the very first series on my new YouTube channel. I'm currently taking subscribers. <laughs> so go ahead and hit that button on the way out so that you can follow me along as I tackle this challenge from week to week. Now I've been out of the art game for a long time. We're talking years. So when starting my channel, I didn't want to be too aggressive and try and just like tackle art from scratch. I want to ease back into it and work at getting my creative juices flowing again. And I've decided that the perfect way is with Create This Book by Mariah Elizabeth. Now, for those of you who don't know who Mariah Elizabeth is, she's a fellow YouTube artist, kind of an inspiration, and highly entertaining. I'm going to link her channel down below. And she wrote this book. It's a book full of art prompts, giving us a starting point, and then using our own creativity, we fill the book with our lovely art, thus creating the book. Now, I'm a little late to the party. This book has already been around for a long time, so much so that there's already a Create This Book 2 and just released a Create This Book 3. Yes, I bought all of them. And now I'm just so excited for all three that I kind of don't know where to start. So you know what? I'm just gonna do all three of them at the same time. I figure one week I'll do a handful of prompts from Create This Book 1, the next week a handful from Create This Book 2, Next week, create this book three, so on and so forth, and we'll just keep rotating. Now between all three books, there are over 300 prompts. So this is a massive undertaking, and as far as I'm concerned, I've already spent way too much time talking about it. Let's jump right in and see what I can create. <laughs> to set the tone for the entire book, our first step is to decorate this cover. I mean, it would be blasphemy to leave it white like this. I had to search far and wide for inspiration. Oh wait, no, there it is. I was inspired by the classic composition book. Step one, tape off the spine. Step two, I'm using acrylic to paint the whole thing black. Yes, in theory, it would have been easier to leave the cover white and add black splotches. Doing it this way looked more accurate to a true composition book. Mostly dry, except this itty bitty spot. So using a real composition book for reference, I started with the white splotches. A little real-time glimpse here. This was a slow and tedious process. Let's just blaze right through the rest of it instead. So here's where I got impatient and peeled the tape off before even finishing the cover. <laughs> I can't help it, it's just so satisfying. And back to the white splotches. The finish line is in sight, I swear. Also, I left the area under the word and intentionally blank so I can add my name there later. And now for the spine, which needs to be black, as it is with all composition books. Having taped that edge before actually really helped keep the line straight here. Cover all this up. I have a plan for it later. Okay, so I wanted to color the rest of this cover with alcohol-based markers, but in other videos, I've seen that those tend to fade, especially on this material and especially if you laminate it. For whatever reason, that does not happen with regular paper. So here I am reproducing the cover images onto plain old paper. Now for the fun part, coloring. I chose green because that splat immediately made me think of the Nickelodeon slime. Shout out to all my fellow 90s kids. As I said before, I'm using alcohol-based markers. These are an Amazon off-brand, Sanjoki, I believe, but they work great. They blend real smooth. Okay, let's get this baby lined. Ooh, look at that transition. It's just like magic. Outlining my letters in white. My paint pen was definitely dying on me here. After a while of fussing with it on camera, I gave up, got a new one, and here we are caught up. Now to add some juicy highlights. This is my favorite part, so we definitely need a special highlight song. And now I cut it out, which was much easier said than done. Now to glue the splat in its proper place on the book. And now the scribble, which really just looks like a squirt of paint coming from this pencil. Weird. Okay, the most nerve wracking part, ghetto lamination using packing tape to preserve the cover. You only get one shot at this and I did pretty okay. But by the second piece, no lie, the pressure got to me and I had to finish off camera. Clearly didn't realize how out of frame I was here. 
but using a label maker to 3D print my name. And attaching it like so. A little white border to make it pop. And voila, finished front cover. No time to celebrate though, because we still have a whole back cover to do. Starting off by painting it all black, just like the front, but I opted not to do the composition printed pattern. Was it a cop out? Maybe, but I didn't want to do all that twice. Besides, the star of the back cover is going to be this barely visible sketch. <laughs> Between the composition book and the radioactive green splat, I was getting hard sciency vibes. Like a chem lab experiment gone horribly wrong. I thought of a mad scientist, and when I think mad scientist, I think Frankenstein. And when I think Frankenstein, I think Bride of Frankenstein. So here, what if I do the Bride of Frankenstein, only this time, she is the scientist. Ha! I'm using my markers for this as well, starting by laying down the shadows, and using colored pencil to really smooth out some of the gradients. Okay, now let's skip ahead to when the liner is finished. Oh yeah! Juicy highlight time! Give her the old chop chop! And here I spent a good five minutes trying to be overly precise with her placement before finally gluing her down. Used my white paint pen to add some little background stars, then had the idea to do some lightning, which honestly looked way cooler, and I wish I had only done that, but the stars were already there. I was committed, so I added some more. Totally logical, right? Round two of the packing tape lamination. Nope, I guess I chickened out. Okay, here we go again. Why are you hesitating? What are you waiting for? Okay, let's just fast forward. Another label. Remember when I said I had something planned for the spine of the book? Yeah, this is it. Nothing special, but there you have it. And here's the finished back cover. Can't lie, the glare of the packing tape definitely takes away from it on camera, but I'm glad I did it because in person she looks so darn good that I definitely want to preserve her as best I can. All right, let's get inside the book now. This title page is virtually identical to the front cover. I want to paint this inner cover black, on this side, I wanted to replicate the green splat from the cover. And we're going to continue with the sciency chemistry type theme. Oh, wow. Okay, just a skip ahead there. No transition. Cool. Anyways, back to this page. As I was saying, we're going to continue with this theme. So I wanted to open with this corny yet thematically appropriate chemistry joke. What do you do with a dead chemist? Bury him! <laughs> Now back to this side, I just wanted to fill the page with some sciency doodles. I'm sure by now you guys can tell I'm like super smart when it comes to the science things. Didn't flunk chem at all, don't worry. But we've got some beakers, some molecules, some chemical formulas, an atom. I think you get it. I also added my name, Ashley Monet, where it indicated. Some highlights and here it is all finished. Oh, also, I did the packing tape lamination on the left side. Next up is the copyright page. It has this cool little box for me to fill, but as far as the rest of the text on here, I really don't care, so I'm not going to do too much. I have to contend with some bleed through of the liner I used on the last page. These pages are so thin, pretty much everything bleeds through. Pet peeve! I thought black chalk pastel might work to disguise it, but it was my first time using these pastels. It wasn't blending and it looked really, really bad. I worked at it some more off camera and it still looks like crap. And I even got some chalk on the previous page. Curses! Whatever, I'm just gonna Mod Podge it and move on to the next page. Using colored pencil, I added some gray shading around the header text and colored a little box around these like positive affirmations. So ironically, one of the messages said to embrace accidents slash mistakes, which I found quite relevant to this page so far. So I draw this bubble around it, trying to give it some emphasis. And what happens? Another mistake. Fully annoyed at this point, I decided to focus on the empty box, which I had drawn something off camera for. First, I added a drop shadow to the words empty box. Then using glue tape, attached my drawing. And while I was doing this, I'm realizing what happened. 
trying desperately to fix it. Cursing the world. And with that, I gave up on ever being happy with this page. I will say I do like the Frankenstein drawing, apart from the rest of the page, though. The next page was pretty simple. It's just the tips and tricks page, which basically talks about which materials are ideal to use. And really a bunch of info no one cares about. I'm just going to decorate the header. So using colored pencils, I drew a nice radioactive green dripping slime to stay on theme, of course. Now that that's done, let's do the other side. Gorgeous. A little outline. And juicy highlights. And here we go. Easy peasy. Okay, the next page is really self-explanatory. It's basically just a checklist for the tasks that we have just completed in this video. First, that big white word create was begging for some decoration. So using colored pencils, I made it green, added some stitching, and a pair of bolts. Hello, Frankenstein font. So item number one, customize the front cover. We can mark that one. Item number two, add color and or text to the spine and edges of the book. I'm counting it. I did the spine. Item number three, make the title and copyright page more interesting. Check and check. And item number four, add a personal touch to this page. You betcha. Off camera, I drew up this quick little start date page, which is a nice finishing touch, I'd say. Here it is, all put together. And with that, we are all done with our intro pages and on to actual prompts. Hallelujah. Our first prompt, create a fancy name. Write your name on this page in a fancy way. Ideas. Use large text, write with your best pen, include your favorite color, etc. So for this one, I'm working outside of the book because I want to use watercolors, which again, will bleed through the pages. I'll glue the page back into the book when I'm finished. Immediately when I read this prompt, I knew I wanted to write my name with the wall of lights from Stranger Things. I'm working in layers to create the floral wallpaper look that will be the background. Next, I'm making the base for each of the string lights. Pretty much, I'm taking acrylic paint that's the color I want the light to be, putting a small dot of it on the page, then dabbing it with my finger to blend it out. Then I do the exact same thing all over again, except this time adding a little white to each color to create sort of a center glow in each spot. Now I go over each light one more time with a dot of pure white acrylic paint for the brightest glow point. And now for the fun part, adding the letters one under each light. So for anyone who hasn't seen the show, Winona Ryder's son goes missing and she discovers that despite not being able to see him, he's still able to hear her and make lights flicker. So she hangs a bunch of string lights with a letter painted under each one and they are able to communicate as he lights up a letter and spells out his message. So here's the part where I ruin everything by deciding that the whole thing needed to be darker. So I did a wash of brown watercolor over everything, which ended up being so opaque that the entire background was lost. So here you see me painstakingly repainting the entire background flower pattern as well as all of the wainscoting. Can't lie, I was annoyed, so I did this pretty sloppily. The extra work sucks, but I still think making it darker was the right call. And I stand by it, darn it. And after cutting it to size and sealing with Mod Podge, it was ready to be glued back into the book. Well, now that it's on the page, I need to figure out what's going to go right here. I've got a thought. So this process is pretty much identical to the other side. There's the wainscoting, the floral background, and yes, even the dark wash that forces me to repaint the entire background. If you haven't called it yet, I'll be doing the Demogorgon on this side. The whole process took a while and there's not much more to say about it. So instead of voiceover, let's do some music.
With the Demogorgon finally where he belongs, I decided to give the prompt a little flair. Seems like sheer dumb luck that the prompt already had this curly line. I just added some lights to it and voila, another string of lights. And here's the finished spread. Man, this one took some work, but I'm super happy with the end result. It's exactly how I envisioned it. All right, this will be the last prompt of the video and kudos if you made it this far. Create a rule, make a rule for yourself and follow it on each page of this book, unless it conflicts with the instructions. Write your rule in the box provided. Examples, draw a symbol on every page, date the bottom of each page, add a sticker to each page, etc. I'm starting by taping off my borders. I plan to use acrylic paint on this page. As long as it's not super watered down, acrylic actually won't bleed through these. I chose a deep purple. No real reason, I just did. And I covered the rule box as I will be adding my own later. Now using a brush and a straw, I'm gonna make some ink splatter. Now on the left, I'm using my ruler to help with precision because I'm turning this page into, yep, a calendar. Ink splatter, calendar, have you guessed my rule yet? Adding some purple to the prompt. And now for the rule. Sign and date every page. I want every page to be treated as a work of art, no different from a commission painting on canvas, which means no half-assing it. This seemed like an easy rule to stick with because it's customary to sign and date works of art. I will be signing with my Instagram and TikTok handle. Shameless social media plug, come follow me. And our last page of the day can be marked complete. This was a long week's worth of work, so let's recap. We decorated the front cover to look like a composition book with radioactive green slime splattered right on it. We did the inner title page, covered in lots of little chemistry doodles, complete with a little periodic humor. <laughs> We did the copyright page, the bane of my existence. The only good thing about this page was the Frankenstein drawing. I don't even want to look at it. Oh well, embrace mistakes, right? We did the tips and tricks page. Nothing special, but I sure do like it. Although it kind of looks like glittery boogers. <laughs> Ew. We completed the beginning checklist by decorating the front cover, as well as the book's spine, and the copyright page we do not speak of. And finally, this page, decorated with our start date. We created a fancy name, inspired by the Stranger Things wall of lights, haunted by a grisly demogorgon. We created a rule. My rule is to sign and date every page with my social media handle from here on out, creating true works of art. And lastly, our beautiful back cover featuring the Bride of Frankenstein as a mad scientist conducting horrific experiments. <sighs> I don't know which my favorite was. It might have been the Stranger Things fancy name. If you made it this far, first of all, I love you. Go ahead and drop me a comment of what page you liked best and I can know to make more art like that. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and of course come back next week to see what I create. Uh, goodbye!